Ladies and gentlemen, I got a question for you. Where is the weirdest place that you've played a game of chess? Of course, you've played it at your job. You've played it at your home. You've probably played it in school and gotten some teachers upset with you. I don't know, maybe played in a public park, train. What about a sauna against another individual? Wedding, funeral. What about outer space? Can any of you say that you've played a game in outer space? That is the purpose of today's video. This game was sent to me by an individual at NASA. Like, real NASA, not like a spam email pretending to be NASA, because trust me, as creators, we get plenty of garbage emails from people that aren't actually uh, human. Um, this is not that. This is a chess game that just finished between Mission Control in Houston, Texas, and a group of astronauts on the International Space Station, which floats hundreds of miles above the Earth, I think. I think that's correct. If it's wrong, I apologize. And this is actually a series. They're playing more games. And they get Grandmaster titles because they have cool jobs. They're not actually Grandmasters. They're just chess enthusiasts, and it made for really nice and fun content. So I'm going to share it with you, and uh, let me know if you enjoy this, and we can see if the losing side will be able to get revenge in game number two. Uh, also, that'd be really cool if I could play in outer space, but I'm too terrified of that. Uh, Mission Control uh, in Houston, Texas began the game with pawn 2e3, an unconventional move, but you could say going to outer space is unconventional in the first place, so can you really blame them? Uh, and Black responded with the move e5. Principled move, taking the center. White plays knight f3, which immediately by the computer uh, is deemed as an inaccuracy. Uh, it's deemed as an inaccuracy because it allows black to play the move e4. And e4 is a good move, which takes center, has to kick white's knight around, uh, white has to kick their knight around, and then, you know, black can start playing c5 and taking a lot of space and bringing the knights, and it's not a, it's not a horrible move. I mean, knight f3 is basically like a very annoying teacher in school that, you know, docks points from your test for like any reason. Uh, but black just plays principal knight c6, white plays d4, very good stuff in the opening thus far. And if you notice that neither side has an elo, uh, that's deliberate because, uh, well, we can guess it. You know, it's a group of individuals playing, so maybe take their average elo. Mm. D4 is a good move, black plays e4. Uh, and now this is a very different story than the e4 I showed you just a moment ago because a moment ago white needed to move into the center. Now white can go here. And this pawn, actually, there's an argument to be made that it's overextended, because if black plays the move d5 defending it, you immediately play c4. And I don't know how you're going to support the center and the center pawn, because after knight f6, something like this, white just has a clean and very, very healthy extra pawn. And then white will go here, and here, and castle. Uh, I don't like what mission control does here, because in chess, as you improve, you're going to learn... Uh, you're going to kind of learn a concept to a point, and then you're going to tear down that concept and relearn it. For example, in the early stages of the game, if you're training a knight for a knight, it's good, and that's that. Then you're going to get to a level where it's like, nope. In every exchange of pieces, there is a winner and a loser. One side is usually more happy. Uh, and in this case, uh, it's actually black who is more happy, because this pawn is very tough to defend. And that pawn can be attacked, and you can also use that pawn as a trading mechanism to further your own development, so you just used white to develop more. In the game, uh, the astronauts play something very deviant. They play the move c6, which on its own is not a great move, because you're not actually getting anything developed, but there is a really nasty threat, and also this can be used as a building block. You can try to play pawn to d5 later. The deviant threat here is playing the queen out to a5, which is so nasty. Uh, they want to fork Mission Control's king. Yo, they gotta be careful, by the way, taking Mission Control's pieces, because I'm pretty sure Mission Control can give them the wrong instructions home. And I don't know, they better end up on Uranus or some... some uh, you know, that's not actually how you pronounce it. I think technically it's Uranus, but I'm seven years old at heart, so... You know. Uh, is Pluto a planet, by the way? I know it, like, wasn't. Has it been reinstated? Did it, like, go to planet rehab. I, I, I haven't kept up with all that, but this is their idea. They want to capture Mission Control's pawn in the center. Um, knight c3, though, is played, and that move doesn't necessarily defend against the threat, uh, but queen a5 is still possible. It's actually kind of tough to defend this pawn, but this pawn is now under attack. Uh, they play queen to a5. 
And uh, the pressure is still on the pawn here. And here, oh my goodness, Mission Controls find, finds a fantastic move. Uh, here, they defend and attack at the same time. You can say they protect, they attack, uh, but most importantly, they bring astronauts back. And that's uh, queen to d4. Uh, they defend the pawn on e5 from the queen on a5. This is under fire. And white is on the verge of getting a fantastic position. The computer here finds, I think what the computer wants is the move f5. Yes, okay, and the point is that you defend this, and if en passant, I guess you have knight takes, and, uh, and you're fine. I guess that's the idea. Maybe there's something else. I don't think it's d5, because that just loses. Yeah, that, that looks really bad. So I, I don't actually know why the computer is unconvinced here of the pressure. I'm pretty convinced. I don't know, I mean, the attack here looks very, very menacing. But of course, I mean, the computer will, will always find something. Um... They play bishop b4, which is given a double question mark, which I think is a bit harsh. I mean, look at the stockfish eval. It's 0.6. Like, why is it giving them, you know, I guess it's different types of, uh, of stockfishes. This is, as far as I'm concerned, an excellent move. A lot of noobs here would go here because it develops a piece, but that just hangs a clean pawn. Uh, that's not any good. Bishop b4 is what you call a tactical defense. It essentially prevents the threat of queen takes pawn by threatening a tactic somewhere else, which is great. It's a great move. Now, what white should probably do is attack the bishop. That's what I would do. Uh, th get this. Don't trade. Bring your bishop. Bring your other bishop. Castle. And then with the queen in the center, you always have, you know, the queen is a violent piece. Uh, things can open up very quickly for the queen. So e6 is very, very reasonable. Uh, bishop d2 is probably the best move, though, um, because now the knight's movement is re-enabled. And also the queen's movement is re-enabled because the bishop is defending the knight. So excellent stuff. Um, International Space Station plays f6. I don't hate this move. Uh, the point is, again, that you are actually striking back at the center. And if pawn takes f6, there's knight takes f6. And black has gotten development. Uh, black is a move away from being in fantastic shape. For instance, bishop e2. Black is going to go d5. Uh, black's position is really nice visually. Queen has sort of got no targets now. So it's very important right now for Mission Control to strike. All right, it's important that they do something right now um, and don't just kind of lazily play on. And again, this is what I just mentioned. In chess, you learn concepts to a level and then you have to play in a different way. Like a, you have to uh, put asterisks. You don't always have to do that. For example, here, uh, for a beginner, I would say move the bishop and castle. That's what I would say. Like just move the bishop and castle Cas or castle right now, you know, castle in the other direction. Um, but actually, right now, there are, there's an opportunity for white to get an upper hand, and I think they can get an upper hand with the move a3, because black is stretched a bit thin here, and their king is still stuck in the center. So by creating threats that do not weaken your position in any way, you can create long-term improvements, and you can make beneficial exchanges. For instance, if black backs up to e7, suddenly the queen is under fire, and uh, black's in serious trouble after something like this. And then, you know, if the queen goes back, there's knight d6, and it could get very bad. The computer is not convinced because the computer is a scumbag. Um, but bishop c3, bishop c3, now white has a major advantage, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Again, computer completely unimpressed and is sitting there trying to tell you that it's equal. Uh, you will see it's a very difficult position to maintain. Why? Because black traded a dark squared bishop, but has five out of seven pawns on light squares. So you have a light squared bishop stuck behind a bunch of light squared pawns, right? And you don't have a dark squared bishop anymore. White is also more developed. White has the more powerful diagonal attackers on an open board. Uh, white is very happy here. Probably black should trade queens, if I'm being honest. Black should probably try to queen trade. Uh, in the game, uh, International Space Station plays queen f5, which is also a pretty reasonable move. And as I've just been saying, uh, there is bishop e2, there is castling either way. I love white's next move, which is long castle. Love this move. Um, on the surface, it hangs a pawn, but it is... Look at the advantage that white gets if black takes a free pawn. It's, it's really sensational stuff. It's the reason is the lack of development and the poor king safety. So right now, probably something like queen e5 is good. Uh, and black is forced to move the king out of check. And if black tries to stick around in the center, it's probably going to go from bad to worse. I mean, I imagine white can play bishop c4. I imagine white can bring something to d6. Maybe you need to guard this. I'm not so convinced you need to guard that pawn. I think you can play bishop c4. Okay, you lost a touch of advantage, but it's still fine. And black's just like in no position to fight back with a move like d5 because there's no threat. I mean, there's simply no threat. 
So you can play Rook F1 and Sacrifice and et cetera, et cetera. I'm doing this blind. I don't have the engine open. Uh, but uh, yeah, Queen F2 is too dangerous. So Black plays D5. Uh, and actually here, the International Space Station won a game within a game. They won Connect 4. I don't know if they were you know, playing the new version of chess where you win if you put four pawns in a row. Uh, and right now, what white needs to do is open up the board. Like, what's the game plan, right? In chess, everybody struggles in this phase of the game. Like, this is, in chess, single-handedly, the hardest thing. The opening is over. What now? Well, you always look for checks, captures, and attacks. In this position, the only check white has is queen e5. And if I asked you, like, who is happier with a queen trade, it's very tough to say, but it's probably black, because black's king is still in the center. So, a queen trade, look what happens to the eval... It plummets, right? I mean, it's back to roughly, roughly equal, but uh, white doesn't have any substantial threats. So you don't want to play queen e5. So what do you want to do? Maybe bishop e2 or something. You also want a pawn break. You want to break these apart because your position will improve drastically if you can get into black's position. So white's next move is really interesting. It's f4. It's not really a pawn break. Unless you play en passant, but if you don't play en passant, like let's just say you develop, then white is going to start very quickly. Look at this. Look, oh my god, look at that eval. All of a sudden the, the pawn wave is coming, and there's a fork, and that leads to some good stuff, and now you're a piece up. I got news for you. It's not, it's not over anytime soon, and I have a cannonball of a battery pointed at that direction, so... I mean, I'll say things are going pretty well, right? So black plays e takes f3. Black actually does take en passant. And here, mission control gets a little bit spicy. All right, mission control gets a little bit spicy. And what they should do is, of course, take back. Don't overcomplicate things, just like going to space. You know, you overcomplicate things could go real bad. Um, you don't want to play hope chess. In chess, sometimes the best move is just the simplest. You want to recapture. If you don't want to recapture, go here. Because it develops a piece and it attacks the queen. But just simple. K uh, kiss. Keep it simple stupid. All right? They're not stupid. They're really smart. But I'm just saying keep it simple stupid. Right? G takes F3. Why? Okay. Yes, this attacks a couple of things. But we just develop. Also, that's not a real threat. So you can just take the file. Right? If castles, they're castling directly into the barrel of the rook. So that's not any good. Instead, after en passant, uh, mission control plays bishop c4. How many of you have played moves like this? And if you think moves that just hang a bishop, that's not what that is. You are all more than capable of doing that. But moves that are like, oh, I'm going to play a move because my idea is if they take me, I have queen d8. Yes, everything you just said is right. I'm going to play this move if they take me, queen d8. Is the verdict of that thought move? No, because you never thought of, I play my move, what if they don't take me? You only proved yourself right, but you need to disprove yourself. And that is why in this position, International Space Station just played here. They just took another pawn, because they're not going to take the bishop. They saw the threat, right? So now white has to respond, right? And, uh, and, and in this position, um, international again, keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. Rook g1, rook e1, you know, go here. And listen... Look, castles, now, now that's a real threat. It wasn't a threat a move ago, so don't have tunnel vision. Back up. And look, white can get back into the game very quickly. I mean, I'm telling you, these cannons pointed in this direction, it's ugly. And I mean, it, it's real ugly. Like, there could be sacrifices looming. This might be a little bit rushed. But all of this is possible. And there's a very different type of sacrifice, because the way I just sacrificed the bishop was a forcing sacrifice. There's a difference between how you sacrifice. This is opening the king. He's got no choice. The move bishop c4, however, uh, it is a choice. Black doesn't have to take at all. There's no, right? Um, so now bishop d3 is played, attacking the queen. And here, uh, International Space Station deserves uh, a brilliant move for this. Uh, they play pawn takes rook and they make another queen. And that was missed. Again, you don't need to move the queen if you can get <laughs> another queen. And now we got a situation here on our hands. Uh, and uh, rook h1 is played, but unfortunately, after all of this, black now gets to move their queen, and it's just up a rook. They are just up a rook, but it's not over. h4, and you'll notice that the black king is still in the center. Queen to g4, queen e5 check. 
All right, now there, there are plenty of ways to lose games up material. Look at this. Look at the eval. It's back to nearly equal despite black, black being up a rook because three of black's pieces aren't playing and the king is about to get butchered. Look at this. Rook f6 is on the way. White is winning. You could be down a pe you could be down a rook, but completely winning. This should be four. King f7. Here's a way to lose. Just straight up lose the game, right? So in, in chess, the two most important things are material and king safety. Queen e6, queen g5, castles. Black gets the king to safety and now has sufficient defenses in place. Look at this. Rook g1, h5, literally white utilizing every resource. But the problem in chess is that you need two more attacking pieces than defenders. Black is solid. And let's not forget, black is up a rook, so black is bringing help. That is fantastic stuff. Bishop b4, trying to take away some squares. Um, black plays knight e4, and now the fun is over uh, because the bishop is blocked, and now the queen is under attack, and black begins active counterplay. b6, c5, trying to kick out the bishop. Anywhere the bishop moves, it's going to get taken. And one of the ways to win a game of chess is to attack the opponent. The other way is simplification. Knight takes bishop. That's a fantastic move. Now white is down to three pieces. And I told you one of the other ways to win the game is just a crushing attack using your material advantage. D4. And that opens the door to the queen. And that's fatal because uh, white has to cover that and lose this pawn. Now the bishop is activated on the diagonal. And um, mission control here tries to go for danger levels. Hitting the queen and the queen here, but uh, I mean, I, I would just take, I wouldn't even, you could just simplify, but unfortunately, queen f6 is just a brilliant move. I mean, queen f6 is a sensational move by the International Space Station. The queen is hit, and even though the rook can be taken with check, black plays the move king f8. Now there are no checks on the king, the queen is hit. And it's not just the queen, because the queen on f6 was threatening queen a1 mate. I mean, that was a surgical technique by the International Space Station team. They pushed the d-pawn to infiltrate with the queen. White had to stop that, so they took, and now the pawn prevents the king escape. And they met the queen attack with queen f6 which was only made possible because you forced white to play b3. So d4 forced b3, opened up the, I mean, that, opened up the diagonal and just incredible stuff. Black in this game, uh, I don't know what their average rating is. Um, they didn't play uh, perfectly, but I would say, I mean, listen, they played like 16, 1700 level chess. White probably played around more like 1100. 1200 level chess at least in particular in this game but again a lot of it comes down to the opening like the opening was very shaky for white and black played quite well this move i don't think deserves two two question marks uh and uh yeah i mean black was you know like kept it simple white played a couple of risky moves here and they sort of backfired um but i can see this also being like you know a 1500 playing with white just sort of like going for tricks and they don't work and then oops and black just converted so the score is one to nothing. The International Space Station leads over mission control. Let me know if you'd like to continue the series. And um, this is day three of, uh, day two of vacation with the plant. We've got a few more days to go and then we'll be back home. Get out of here.